thank you, Sheriff, for bringing that up because that is a, a true concern in my district. And, um, Commissioner, I Let's see if it stays on. Can you hear me? Okay. This is the finicky one from earlier. So, um, you know, I, I, I want to echo my, my colleagues' concerns about um, the attrition at CBP, and you talk about the 25 suicides in the last two years, and that is, that is truly heartbreaking that people are facing these challenges and they feel like there's no other way out, and uh, we want to do everything we can to make sure your workforce feels supported, but can you talk a little bit more about the morale? And, um, you know, I, I think that it's very clear there, something's got to change with policy because people feel like they have no other option but to either quit or take their own life, and we don't want to put people in that position. Can you talk about what policies should change at DHS to make sure that we don't face these major problems with our CBP, CB, CBP agents? Uh, well, first of all, thank you, um, you know, for the support for the men and women of, of Customs and Border Protection. It's much appreciated. Uh, second of all, thank you for the funding we received the last couple of years. Number one, we have to take care of our folks. Um, but, you know, number two, um, yeah, I think uh, one of the things that we have done over the last six months, uh, specifically for the Border Patrol agents, is uh, really making, well, the last year or so, is uh, really making a concerted effort to get the men and women of CBP, or Border Patrol in particular, back in between the ports of entry. Um, back to actually fulfilling their mission, not processing people, but out in the field. Back to, yeah, to in between the ports of entry. And we've made significant strides uh, with the Border Patrol processing coordinators uh, that we've, we've got over 1,000. We have uh, additional classes. And in fact, those folks are being, becoming our biggest recruiting pipeline, the folks that want to do that same job that the Border Patrol agents are. And then are. you might feed them into those positions. In exactly. Future, so, yeah, we've We're happy to hear that, obviously. But, I mean, you still have a pretty good delta to, to get to your full force. So can you speak a little bit, you know, obviously you're asking for these new agents, and I, I asked um, Acting Director Johnson the same question with ICE, right? You've got this, this need, and, and you're, you're, you've got a gap here, over 800 open slots that you currently have, and you're asking for more. Can you tell me more about how you're going to get those people into these, these slots so we can actually keep our border uh, under control? Yeah, so thank you, ma'am. So, so again, I think the flexibility has helped us. I certainly um, getting the, the hiring engine back up and, and running was uh, extremely important. So our application numbers are, are going up. So um, we're getting more people into the pipeline. Um, the Border Patrol processing coordinators are actually uh, one of our top recruits. We've looked at the back end, and uh, we spoke at this at length, and, and Sheriff Rutherford actually mentioned as well at the Academy and, and fixing our attrition rate or our uh, changing uh, drop, the testing. Yeah, yeah. The chasing the testing. So, in between, we're looking at our HRM processes to, um, to try to really, for me, it's yield rate. The number of folks coming into the pipeline, making it to, to Border Patrol agent, and right. the time to hire. So we have to fix those two, two things. It's about 260 days right now from the time somebody applies uh, for the job uh, to the time that they, they get hired. So we need to shrink that, and my challenge to the team is in half. And we're doing that by looking at the processes and pre. Uh, uh, procedures of our uh, HRM staff. Right. Uh, yeah, so well, because I think it, it I, when I was down there, I've been down there twice to hear yep. directly from folks, and it was shocking to me to see how many people were being pulled from other areas of DHS, um, including FEMA, um, to, to help with these positions, and that's just unacceptable. These should be CBP agents, not FEMA agents. FEMA should be dealing with hurricanes in Florida and flooding in Iowa, not our southern border. So um, another thing that the agents pointed out to me is that uh, technology is helpful. You know, and I have been a big supporter of automated surveillance technologies, uh, tactical kits, mobile surveillance capabilities. All of those are force multipliers, and I believe that uh, cross-border tunnel detections, you know, I've learned a lot about that technology and how effective that is, especially when we're talking about stopping fentanyl and these transnational gangs and cartels. Um, can you talk about the number of encounters with that CBP is experiencing at the border, the, the growing number of uh, uh, people that the cartels are bringing across to distract you from doing your mission, right? And I think it's very clear they're doing that. Um, how valuable are those technologies to your Border Patrol agents? Uh, the technology is, uh, we, we need the technology. We have to have the technology now. It, it really, um, especially with uh, the new uh, automation, machine learning, artificial intelligence, mm -hmm. that shrinks the number of folks that we need in these command centers to actually look at uh, the screens and try to determine what's, what's happening. And to your point, 
uh, with the TAC devices and getting that information directly to our officers and agents so they can respond to those events. It, it, it's vitally important. We need the technology. We need the continued funding. And, and you know, I think uh, our uh, Office of Information Technology and Border Patrol is doing a good job to, to really get that actionable information to the hands of the frontline agents so they can respond appropriately. Yeah. And I know I'm out of time, but I'll, I'll submit some follow-up questions for the record specifically about um, countering things like new threats uh, like Xylazin that we're seeing um, as an amplifier for our fentanyl problems that are already a huge challenge. So thank you. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. I yield back. Thank you, Ms. Henson. Uh, Mr. Cloud. 